Good morning. It is Tuesday, December 26th. Merry Christmas and welcome to everybody with a Merry Christmas on the Daily Stock Pick newsletter. I did a video. Uh, it was part of a paid newsletter, but the video was free. If you're not signed up for the newsletter, you should probably sign up for the newsletter and other things because Linktree, the link down below, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. You can get everything that you want over there. Newsletter is the fourth one. We got Weeble. Uh, start your 2024 with $1,000 in Weeble. Join me. I've got $1,000 in Weeble as of the at, uh, end of last year. I now have, let's see, the link is down below too, um, but I have got $3,700 worth, uh, worth of stuff. So really, really solid, uh, solid, 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 solid. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, that's good. Thirty-seven hundred bucks. <laughs> hey, not bad for turning a thousand dollars into thirty-seven hundred bucks in a year. Um, let's start out with QQQ um, because where are we? And here's what you want to kind of look at. There's a good video. I'm going to include all of this in the newsletter as well. Um, but a great video with Tom Lee uh, about going into 2024. There's a lot of tailwinds coming together. Um, what he expects. Uh, Tom Lee, along with others, expects small caps um, to be, and, and that would be IWM, but what I really, really want to start off with is uh, QQQ in the newsletter this weekend, even though it was paid, part of the free portion was just a look at QQQ, and I wanted to point out, if you bought uh, QQQ in December of 2021, and you're just sitting there, and, and throughout the year, and you were sitting there with a loss, you're finally back to close to even, if you bought sometime in January 2023 or December 2022, um, then you're 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 way up. I mean, 52 percent. What this points out is the Bob story, and the Bob story. If you don't know it, go back and look at the newsletters. Just search on the newsletters for Bob. Uh, you'll see it is about being in the markets and not getting out and constantly just dollar cost averaging. Um, but it's important to understand this is the reality of this market. If you look at a monthly, if you go just go and look at a long term of this, this is the cues. And if you were to look at a long term of this, look, I mean, this pullback was a good pullback to try and get into. Yes, it was an opportunity to get into the market with this pullback. You can see here 2008, 2009 was a good opportunity to get in. You can see 2020 was a good opportunity to get in. Even the 2000 dot bomb was a good opportunity to get in. You went through many times where you lost, but you're up at all time high. So what should you do? Um, the first thing is don't listen to douches on the internet. Uh, IWM, uh, for everybody saying small caps and big caps are the way to go in 2024. Just imagine uh, if you had gone into energy uh, in the, the middle of this year and you had gone all in on energy and said, hey, everybody's saying to get into energy. So I'm going to go all in on energy. Well, you wouldn't have made money and you would have missed out on this big year-end rally. Um, if you had bought in June, July energy, you just didn't participate. If you traded energy, that's great. But I want to point out is um, if you are a big long-term large cap tech investor like me, you may get lost in all of these messages with everybody saying the, the, the Magnificent Seven, the Grade Eight are going to go down. Uh, they're not going to lead. Don't change strategy. Uh, the point is, make sure that you're you're strategizing. If you want to switch to small caps and things of that sort, I think there's a lot more active management in that type of uh, portfolio. But understand where you're going. Be a, a, a an expert on the charts that you buy. Be an expert on the indices that you buy. Uh, be an expert on things that you're investing in. Don't all of a sudden just listen to some some guy on the internet and say, okay. I'm going to go all in on this one. You know, watch Tom Lee. You know, Tom Lee is is probably the, the most famous bull because he's called actual weeks at this point where he said, hey, the Fed's going to, um, 
you know, hold back and, and we're going to have a two to 3% rally. And you could have uh, participated in that. He's been just legendary, legendary. So I'll include this. I, I, I say you watch this, this, what is it? Five minute video. It's a great video. I'll include it in the newsletter. Uh, also year end tax loss harvesting. Understand the last day to, t- uh, to tax loss harvest is Wednesday. Um, that's going to be your last day to really take a hold of it. So if you are employing that strategy, I urge you to read this article. Uh, I saw this great video um, on on online about SPG, uh, SP. I'm sorry, SPGP. It's GARP, and 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 Victoria Media. She's great. She she analyzes everything. She uses Seeking Alpha. Um, she is a part of the Seeking Alpha. I guess. Uh, affiliate program. So she really, really does a good job. If you're interested in growth at a reasonable price, that's what GARP represents. Uh, Understand SPGP. SPGP is a symbol that you may want to look into. I'll leave it to that, uh, uh, that, the video to kind of show you. Um, CMG, uh, which is Chipotle. Chipotle is a Mexican grill. I am not into $14 burritos. I absolutely hate their rice. Um, And excuse the pop-ups, but for some reason, YouTube won't let me show videos on Safari without the pop-up or disabled. So uh, I quite get quite a lot of pop-ups right now. But um, there was a lot of insiders from director Greg Angles. We can look at CMG. Their PE for a restaurant is just super high at 54. This is a $2,300 stock. They are right at their 52-week and all-time highs. Um, They're doing really well. They're up year-to-date 66%. Um, But their PE is is high. And and I've never necessarily invested based on PE. But for a restaurant... It kind of gets a little tough. Webbush uh, outperformed in neutral. They they reduced their price target to twenty four hundred. Was still is what you know a four or five percent gain from here. But what I wanted to point out is that um, uh, Greg Angles bought. I'm sorry, it wasn't buys. Um, Greg Angles first insider buy of CMG, um, nearly two million dollars worth. So it's it's a little bit more than a a pool in the backyard. Um, but it's nearly $2 million worth of stock on December 15th at 2284 and you're trading at 2300 So you're not far off if you want to look at CMG uh, as a stock that you may want to invest into. My algorithm makes you 106% over two years versus making 30% buying and holding. You've got some gaps. I mean, the gaps have been filled, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about them. The only worry that I I have in this one, if you enjoy fourteen dollar burritos, if you like shoving, you know, mint, what is it, uh, saffron flavor? I, I forget the 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 flavor that they put in their rice. I absolutely hate it. Give me plain white rice. Yeah, I, I'm I'm horrible at that stuff. But just give me plain white rice. And when I ask for it, they're like, no, we don't have any. But they do make their fresh guacamole every day. So um, Chipotle, eh, it's my thing. But th- that big buy did catch my eye. It was interesting. Uh, super, super interesting. And uh, let's take a look. One thing that I wanted to point out is that I sold out of my XLY. And here we are in Seeking Alpha. And I sold out at 180 and the reason I sold out at 180, I've, I've gone over in the newsletter why I like, you know, I, I looked at XLY, XLK, and other sectors. XLY is still a great, great uh, sector, spider sector. It's the consumer discretionary. If we go over here to holdings, we can see half of this, 23% and 18%, almost half are Amazon and Tesla. You got Home Depot, you got McDonald's, you got Nike, you got Lowe's, you got Booking Holdings. You just get a great basket of stocks in this. Um, what my issue was and why I sold out of it, and I sold out of it not completely, but a large majority in my uh, retirement portfolio. Um, so it wasn't a tax event. I did sell some of mine in my brokerage to uh, de- de- tax loss harvest and to gain some cash for next year. Um, and, and the reason being is I want to redeploy this. And the reason I want to redeploy this is that 52-week range. And I often call them sliders. I think they're sliders. You have them in Fidelity. You have them in Seeking Alpha. If you look at this 52-week range, the 52-week high is 182.19. And on Friday, I saw it at 180. And I said, let me just put in an order on Friday. And I put in a couple of orders at 180. 
And I sold a large amount. I mean, we're talking mm, probably mid five digits. Um, so I, I, I just sold. I, I mean, it had grown to a large amount of, of my portfolio. You know, Amazon's not at a 52 week high. Um, if we look at XLY specifically in the, uh, the algorithm right here, in the four hour algorithm, uh, we'll kind of bring this one down a little bit so you can see. I saw this kind of at 182 coming over here, maybe a, a little bit uh, of a dip down here to 177. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of gaps that haven't been filled, specifically 162. I think the volume level is going to keep uh, it up here. So I don't expect it to come down uh, significantly hard, but look at how high it is on the MACD. Look at the RSI at 63 coming off 81. So I, I figured it might be time for a little bit of, of a break. Now, you know, XLY is how I play Tesla. Um, that is how I hold Tesla. I am looking at their year-end um, stuff. Um, I, I'm seeing a potential golden cross on this one, potential gap below, currently 25% since the November entry. MACD is starting to cross down again, RSI at 56, which is in no man's land. I don't know where Tesla is going. I just figured at the 52-week high, or close to it, I'd get out. And, and, and so, you know, again, seeking alpha analysts say hold, quant says buy. I probably went against those. I figured it was the end of the year. I'm rebalancing. I thought it was a good opportunity to try and get this. Now, a couple of things um, to look at over the weekend um, or, or after Christmas. If you go into the app store, what was the most uh, downloaded app? It was MetaQuest. That tells me a, a ton of people bought that damn headset. Um, this could be bullish for Meta. Uh, Meta is down right now. It's trading at 353, which is quite a, a, a you know, if we go over here to uh, Seeking Alpha and we look at Meta, um, if you look at the, the range again, it's 357 was the, the 52 week high. So you're super high. Seeking Alpha Analyst, buy. Wall Street, strong buy. Quant rating, strong buy. The only thing that's bad about it is the valuation. If we go over here, because most people have um, access to Finviz and Seeking Alpha, portions of it are premium. Uh, you can get the link down below if you want the premium version. And again, I apologize for the pop-ups. Um, but Meta's PE is 20, 31. The Ford PE is 20. I don't think that's a crazy price for a company that's printing money with their advertising business uh, and getting into the hardware business in a fairly big way. We do know that Apple's Vision Quest uh, or Vision Pro is coming out um, uh, later this, uh, probably in February, I think is the expectation now. But if Meta sold a ton of these things, I mean, that just solidifies them in the game. And now I don't think that Meta is going to displace Apple, but if they can get behind them, kind of like Android got behind iOS after um, the successful iPhone launch, that means Meta's number two. That means that PE, that forward PE might actually come down if they have additional revenue. So I think that was interesting. The other one that was, uh, that, that was downloaded was Amazon Alexa. Um, and Amazon, I just don't think you're done moving on Amazon. Like I said, at, at 120, I bought a ton of this. Um, you're still about 13, 14% from your all time highs. I think you get up there to that, that 180, 190 level. It's up 0.33. Uh, we are in the, uh, Santa Claus rally uh, week this week. So might be interesting, uh, an opportunity that I saw, uh, for January. And if you want to get in now, it might be a, a good time. It's just a little bit tricky. Baba China stocks are a little tough. Um, Baba January is the best performing month of Alibaba since its IPO back in 2014. If we expand the seasonality here, you go back nine years to 2014, you can see 67% uh, win rate. Now, no, December has been a horrible month for Baba, uh, you know, past 14 years and um, this past month, but 67% win rate with an, a, a mean change of 6.94. Might be an opportunity to buy Baba. Here's what I noticed too, and it might be an opportunity to buy Baba because when we go to weekly, and again, I'll include both of these in the newsletter, but you can see the first week of the year, 78% win. The second week, um, you get a 67% win with a 2% uh, a, a, a two, a two win uh, on average, mean change of 4% in the first week. 
So again, if you want, it's an idea. You could go go at it. But I'll include both of those charts uh, in the newsletter. You can see it's down here. It's just kind of been hovering. It's at 75. The algorithm got you in at uh, 72. The algorithm does work on this. Um, doesn't make you money. Loses you 0.4%. But if you bought this 24 months ago, you're down 35% if you just held. It, this gets you in and out. Uh, let's see how many positions. 30 positions over 24 months. So this could be a winner. I don't know that the 50 days moving positive, but the nine days moving positive. So uh, you do have some kind of confirmation. I just figured it was a good time to kind of look at that um, just because those those seasonality kind of stats uh, look good. Um, so let's go into crypto. Went nuts. Uh, on Friday, I did buy Mara and I bought Mara at $26, I think. Right now in pre-market, you're down at 2.17%. 2, 2 um, you're at 26.13. So I'm probably about even. I think I was up like 4 or 5%. I think it got to, you know, 27 something. Let's see. Uh, in the market on Friday, it was at 27.43. In the afternoon, it got to 27.73. So I was up. Uh, I'm down right now. I'm, I'm looking at holding this one. I'm not looking at selling this one. I'm looking at holding this one for a few weeks. I do like the confirmation here. The run scares me a little bit. I didn't buy a ton of it. I think I bought 100 shares uh, at 26, so it's $2,600. Wasn't an enormous one, but this article in the newsletter... I'm sorry, in Seeking Alpha, number of crypto stocks at 52 weeks high on Friday has Robinhood, has BT, BITF, CLSK, uh, Coin, um, uh, MSTR, BKCH. Read this article. Just look at some of those names if you wanted to. I chose Mara. Uh, I've been meaning to get into Mara. I finally got Mara. If it goes down, you can call me the mooch. You can say, hey, this guy, you know, he, he ruined it for all of us. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, I'm going to go into social requests now. A paid sub, uh, he left me this message, and it was great. Uh, you're not only a hard worker, you're genuine with when you compare it. Uh, this is a, when you pay, I guess, for the newsletter, you can leave me a nice little note. I read these. I read every one of them. What called me, caught my eye on this one uh, was, you always talk about the douche on the internet, and I and no one meet Kevin. Meet Kevin is just an a-hole. I mean, I just don't like that guy. And if you don't, you can uh, Google his DUI, which he got out of, and he brags about getting out of his DUI. Uh, he was drunk. He just knew kind of the law and, and got around the law. Just, again, a douche. Do not listen to meet Kevin. Um, that guy got famous, I think, during the pandemic when he kind of did some stuff. RIP Austin from Spotify. M-O-D-G and G-O-O-S. M-O-D-G is Top Golf. Um, I am not, I don't go to Top Golf. full disclosure. Um, it's a Callaway brand as well. I, I prefer tailor-made clubs. Uh, and you know, it's been years since I played golf, but I was never a huge Callaway fan. I do like Callaway as I get older because they do, um, cater to, from what I remember, the older crowd. Um, you can see the algorithm, uh, it loses you 26%. Uh, buying and holding this one loses you 47%. This is just a high cost business. Um, if we go over here to, no, I don't want this. Oh, um, MODG. God, I got to get this uh, blocker back on. But uh, MODG right here, you've got a PE of 30. I mean, forward PE of 38. Which one do you think is actually better for growth? MODG or Meta? Because Meta is is actually less expensive. This one's down 27% year to date. So I just kind of point out, you know, MODG doesn't excite me. If you go to Top Golf, um, maybe it's exciting for that one. If you play golf, maybe exciting for that one. They have some insider buys. Um, this guy bought almost $2 million at $19. He's way down. That's the director. President and CEO has been buying a couple hundred thousand uh, dollars worth of shares everywhere from 19 to 12. He's getting paid that amount of money per year. So it's not like he's putting his net worth really online for this one. Um, I'm just not, you know, the, the average target uh, is 1534 and you're trading at 1426. I mean, I, I just don't see a, a, a big upside for that one. G-O-O-S. Is this Canadian goose? Yeah. 
Canadian Goose Holdings. This was a uh, fan favorite, a um, retail favorite. Uh, it's down 32%. Its PE is 23, forward PE of 15. They're in apparel. So, I mean, that's a big PE for apparel to try and grow. Um, they're down 51% from their 52 week high. So, um, you know, it's a, got a 31% short interest. I think people are betting that this one actually goes bankrupt. Um, it's got a huge short interest. I would not play this for a short, uh, a, a short, um, squeeze, but G O O S, if you want to see it in the, uh, in the, the algorithm here, uh, it has a buy here at 1024. You're at 12. You've got some positive momentum that kind of seems to have gotten done with that MACD move. Um, I would be not, I would be getting out with a profit if you got in at 10 bucks on this one and just taking your profit because the long-term outlook of this one is not good. It's just not good. I mean, look at how much it's fallen. So if you've gotten in on this late, uh, late rage, late year run, I just, I'd take the profit. I mean, honest to God, I'd take the profit. It's just, you know, it's not my thing. Let's just say that. Uh, Dex uh, from Spotify asked me about Jeppy. So Jeppy is a high dividend payer, and this is equity premium income. So it's not one that you typically want to trade. And you can see this one from November 1st, you bought at 52. It's a nice rally here of what, like uh, 8%, somewhere around there, uh, 5%, 5.1%. Um, you just crossed your 200 day. You had your golden cross. It's an opportunity to buy, but really with Jeppy, um, I would Google and go on YouTube and watch some uh, videos on Jeppy because it's, it's dividend is 8.6%. That's what you're buying it for. You're buying it for the income. So essentially, if you want to look at this one from a long term, I don't suggest trading it, but if you're buying this for the long term, it doesn't have a ton of history around it. But if you bought this um, way back in 2020, say you bought this in May of 2020 when it first came out, uh, it had a, a fairly big candle, 1.37. But May of 2020, you were trading at, you opened at $50.55. So 2020, you've got your 10% income plus you got 8% per year. It's not horrible. But you know you could have bought uh, bought Apple back here and probably made close to sixty or seventy percent. So it, it's just about what you want. If you want income, Jeppy's your thing. If you don't want income, you, you know you're not protecting your capital. What they're doing is they're playing uh, options. They're playing short and um, short and puts and calls, and, and they're buying and selling those in order to collect premium. This is just if you are Walter, if you are seventy something years old, and you need income to live on. Jeopardy, Jeppy might be your thing. Just to understand, the value of your actual asset goes down because all they're doing is, is buying some income. Uh, I'd rather see you in a 20-year bond that pays 5% rather than get 8% uh, and, and lose your equity. Get a bond that pays 5% and, and, you know, for 20 years and, and or 10 years and just sit in that and collect 5%. That would be my thing. Uh, God of War. <laughs> Hershey's. Uh, HSY, this has been killed. I mean, this is just a, a, you know, it's out of favor. Uh, my algorithm loses you 4.5%. If you bought this 24 months ago, you're down 3%. There hasn't been a reason to get into Hershey's. In fact, today Hershey's is one of the scans that came up on the scan and you can see at 182.52. Am I getting into it? No. I mean, I'm just not. It, it, you know, its PE is still a little bit high for a chocolate company. 19 uh, on the PE. Forward PE is 18. Um, they're they're fit. They're 34% below their 52-week high of 278. They are right at their 52-week low of 178. It doesn't excite me. Year to date, you're down 21%. The average target price is 212 dollars. But that, that includes a lot of older target prices. You can see here, the, the most recent Bank of, uh, Bank of America Securities, they lowered from 250 to 200. They're not done going down. I, I just don't, I don't see this company being done going down. You can see um, from their earnings, uh, $2.01, $2.06, $2.60, it's the cost. Their cost is going up and they're just not doing a great job. So I'd probably stay away from Hershey's. I think there's better places to put your money. 
doesn't mean it won't pop up kind of like Nike. I mean, Nike, we, we talked about Nike being a, um, a, a beaten down stock and, and how you want it to get in under 100. And now it's way, you know, it was up here at 120. It's at 108. I bought in at 126, uh, 124, 120, I think maybe 122, somewhere around there. Um, I bought right before earnings. So I, I did a complete mistake. If you want to read about my mistake, it's actually in the newsletter. Um, it is right here in this newsletter about how I've just got too much cash. And cash is dangerous for me to have. I'm used to being invested in the market and taking one stock, selling it in order to buy another. And now that I've got cash, I'm just randomly out there buying. But uh, yeah, Nike was a solid, solid play. But I think Hershey's, I just don't think you want to time the bottom. Unlike Nike, Hershey's has some operational issues that I, I don't know details about. I just kind of headline read on that one. And, and you know what? Here, let's go over to Seeking Alpha. Because this is usually pretty good at looking, you know, the, the quant stuff is usually pretty good at, at trying to time it. Um, they still say hold. And Seeking Alpha analysts are trying to buy it. But it still says hold. The quant rating is what I would look at here, 2.61. I just don't think it's done going down. But you can see five year, um, you know, we're just in that tail. You're right at where you were, what, November 9th of 2021. So look at that 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 slider. It's just, there's nothing here that, that excites me. So God of War, I'd probably wait for that one. Zach from um, Spotify, first solar. I know you shit on uh, Sedge. And end phase earlier this year, uh, and rightfully so, but this one seems much more light, solid, and solar will recover eventually. A lot of green upgrades on Finviz. Hey, I like when you go to Finviz and look at that stuff and give me a reason to actually look at this stuff. Um, first solar, I like it. I, I, I do think, here's the thing. If there's one industry that's going to um, benefit from lowering interest rates, it's this one. But most solar scares me just now, and I like to trade it. I don't like to own it. Um, but that PE of 38, you can see that PE of 38. The uh, average target price is 231. You're at 170. Um, you're right in between your 52-week range. That 231, by the way, is actually it's 52-week high. So you're uh, unlike Sedge and unlike Enphase, you're up 13% year to date. So you can look at that. Do we have any insider buys? No. Everybody's selling. I mean, they're just selling $1 million worth from their CFO on September 1st at 186. Um, people are selling December 19th. Dude sold a half a million bucks. Um, the chief commercial officer for 176. So, I mean, he, well, he sold almost a million bucks. So maybe he needed a pool or something. But I mean, first, I think solar's one to get into. Um, in fact, you can see 159 was the buy here. You've got a positive, um, a positive 50 day. You got a positive nine day, positive 21. They're kind of crossing up. If it holds 164 in the short term, it's kind of capitulating around here. I think you've got that upside there. And and first solar, I think I looked at it um, before. Um, cause I see that yellow line getting back to all time highs will be tough, but plenty of room. If this is the bottom and rates start be, um, being cut and solar comes back to positive. I don't know where that was. I guess that was a year, um, couple weeks ago, but December 11th. Um, so 54%. I mean, if you want to get in there, I, I don't think there's anything that's highlighting me as this is horrible. I mean, you know, Enphase and Sedge, Enphase, shit, Enphase is up 64% since the beginning of November. Again, lower, you know, lower interest rates help solar. So I think it's good. Uh, TM from uh, Spotify wants me to look at Shopify. You guys know I, I said Shopify is an $80 stock before the end of the year. I thought I was crazy when I said that, but I did buy in and I bought more of it. Um, in fact, you know, you're seeing the capitulation here at 76 I do I think it hits 80 by the end of the year? I think it's going to need some type of catalyst. Maybe they come out with some crazy um, you know, Christmas numbers that justify it, but uh, long term on this one, I think you're fine. I, I mean, if you want to get into long term on this one, you're using that that 200 day as as resistance. Until it gets over that, I wouldn't necessarily think that you're going to have a great opportunity in this one. Um, but I think in the new year, we get back to the, the 100s um, because, you know, again, 
Uh, lower interest rates helps these guys. Small business. If small business is the one that's going to uh, benefit, you know, small to medium businesses, the IWM, Shopify is the one that's going to help them. So I, I don't think this one's a bad play at all. It is expensive. Understand this is expensive. If you look at Shopify, they're not making money. The forward PE is 74. Uh, it is 3% from its 52 week high of $80. <laughs> Um, which came back, I guess, I guess it almost hit 80, yes, 79.99, um, back here. So it, it almost hit $80. I almost hit my thing, my, my target there, but the, the average target price is 73. It's expensive. I probably wouldn't get in right now until you get over that 200 day. Um, there's no insider stuff going on here. I don't think there's anything crazy. If we go over to Seeking Alpha and we look at Shop, I think they they just ding it on um, valuation. Yeah, valuation's a D. Everybody says hold. It's run a little bit. That that's the only thing that that you're worried about with Shopify is it's run a little bit. Um, my algorithm loses you 16% over 24 months. Um, uh, if you bought and held, you lost 45%. Super volatile stock. You want to be in this one uh, before it gets to the 100s, but I don't think you buy here. And the only reason I don't think that you buy here is because you've got this gap down here between 62 and 63. I don't think you revisit it, but I think you cool off a little bit. I think we're seeing a little bit of cool off. If we are going to get up that high, I think you get higher in the new year. Uh, let's talk about scans. Roblox. Uh, got another get the, is there anything stopping Roblox? I mean Roblox we've talked about it since 27 here on September 27th. Uh, anything under 40 is a solid buy long term. Watch the charts right now the algo has a 54% gain going in this one. Well it's not 54% anymore. This is up 60 almost 70%. 70 percent yeah over 70 percent because i didn't draw that line effectively enough but this one has a a solid solid move the algorithm loses you 43 percent on this one uh, but buying and holding loses you 57 percent incredibly volatile name understand roblox is incredibly expensive um the, their price to sales right now is 10.91 they're up 61 percent year to date uh if people bought the the metaverse glasses I don't know if they can use them on uh, on Roblox, but you know, d d talk about how many people got their kids Roblox gift cards. Um, uh, Hershey's we talked about has a cross up. Uh, one, the other one that I want to talk about, and there will be more in the newsletter, but AMT American Tower. This is one that got a cross up here, and it's it's gone up from one seventy five to two fifteen. Um, this is 175 back on October 27th. You guys know I hate REITs. I can't stand REITs. But this is up 25% in, in 56 days. Um, and that's just because if we go to a weekly, look at how beaten down this is. And this is, a, you know, it's just crossing up on the oscillator. Uh, the, the RSI is at 63. It's incredibly uh, overbought right now. Um, but if you look at a AMT, uh, they have what they have a 2.97 percent dividend uh, year to date. It's up 1.57. This was negative all year. It's finally up 1.57. You are eight percent from your 52 week high of 235. The target price is 225. So you're not far away from the target price. Um, the most recent target price was December 14th. They say 245. You're trading 215. That's about a 10 percent move. Um, from insiders, you can see they optioned exercised at 87. Uh, the last sale, uh, was from Joanne Reed, who's a director. She sold 891,000. Eh, it's not big. You know, the EVP on August 17th at 178 sold 1.7 million. So th they're, they're obviously higher than they, they were. Uh, I, I still think they probably have room to grow. It's not an expensive stock. Um, from a you know a historical standpoint, but the PE right now is 141. Uh, they're just you know it, it's a, a a cash flow problem right now, so they're they're not making as much money. So is the dividend in danger? I don't think so. But I wanted to point that one out. Uh, Merck, ETH, 
Hershey's, Royal Caribbean, FNGD, NXE are the other ones. I will include them all in the newsletter. If you have any questions, go over to the link tree. Uh, you can join any of the social platforms up here. Trendspider, uh, let's see, do they have a sale going on? If you click on that link, you get the best pricing that's available. So if we go over to pricing and look, um, it is $3.97. You got 16 hours left on this sale right now. Uh, get it before the end of the year. I think this one ends really at the end of the year, not necessarily 16 hours, but I would trust that 16 hours. Again, $400. If you're trading and you're trading like me and you're protecting your portfolio, just XLY. I, you know, I had a few hundred thousand dollars worth of XLY. Um, I, I sold mid five figures of this one. This, the charts protect me. Now, the algorithm didn't get me out. I can, t can think that the algorithm will get me out. You can see the MACD crossing down. This is the four hour algorithm. Tells you when to get in, when to get out. But what this did for me was when I saw that little button hook, I said, you know, sliders at 52 week highs. I saw this little curl. It probably on that sale, even at 179 when you're selling, um, you know, if this gets down to the 176, 170 level, that saved me $400. So it's not just about the cost of Trendspider. It's about saving you money when you can take a look at those charts and understand it. So Trendspider is the top one. Uh, Seeking Alpha. If you click on this, you'll get the best offer. Um, there, there is another discount coming up, I think, tomorrow that is a, is a little bit better. Not much better, but a little bit better. I think it's 160 if I, it's going back to Black Friday sale for a day or two. So maybe click on this one tomorrow, um, but it's 50 bucks off. Whatever the deal that they have, you get 50 bucks off. Uh, I think it's uh, 167, so it's, it's significantly more than $50 off. But it's a great, great deal. Weeble, like I said at the beginning, if you if you want, I just put a thousand dollars in there. I'm at thirty seven hundred dollars right now uh, at the end of the year. So I think it's worth putting some money into Weeble. I love the app. I like trading in the app. I I replaced my sports betting with just betting on stocks. And, and you know during the day, um, and really the only sport I ever bet on was NFL. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, Linktree. Uh, any any kind of thing, you know, you do have the opportunity to say thank you to me. I got so many messages over the last couple of weeks about how people found me in March, found me in February, found me in June, um, found me during during the bull markets, and they've done better. One guy beat the queues uh, after he found me. He did have an option strategy, so he was a little bit more risky. But again, you don't have to buy the ones that I, I I say. If you understand options, I don't play options. If you know how to do options. You can use all my tips in the newsletter to play options. It's free and it's simple. The paid portion is only on the weekends. Uh, you know, I pay, but the, my train spider setup, I, I charge you for, but I give a free seven day trial. So if you, if you like it, one of two things, if, if you like what I've done this year, you can tip me or just subscribe to the newsletter, one or the other, or get trend spider or get seeking alpha. Support the podcast. I do all this stuff for free. So I appreciate everybody. Um, uh, merry day after Christmas. And hopefully we have a good year. Remember, this is the Santa Claus rally. So you do want to trade some, but you probably want to get into something today um, and just hold it. I mean, even if it's TQQQ, I'm still in TQQQ, very small position, but I'm still in this. It, you know, you've got some uh, some confirmation here. If you got in at 45, you're at 50.37. I bought under 50. I bought at 49.99. I don't think it's if you've got some movement this week and we are in this continued Santa rally, just understand volume's going to be light. People are taking off. There's not a whole ton of catalysts going on other than probably negative catalysts like the uh, Israeli conflict, the Middle East conflict. But there's some stuff going on. I, I, I'm t particularly bullish. I, the only reason I sold last week was tax purposes and seeing that XLY was at 52-week high. But I am redeploying cash. I will let you know in the newsletter if I do buy anything. Okay, take care. See you, Every bye. morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily. Don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter. Right outside. and see